Okay, you mentioned Twister earlier. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, how, how did, like, your connection with Twister come about? Um, Kingdom Rock had brought him to a party. Uh, we had this, you know, we had Shy Rock. And Kingdom Rock, we had another organization called the Empire of Destruction. And he had no penny committee. He had all these entities within one, you know? And he brought these three cats to a, a party at the Blue Gargoyle it was at. And his name was Cavalier, the other one name was Creator, the other one name was Connect Flow. And he called himself Fable. And he was like, man, these dudes cold, they want to be a part of you know you dig. You know, okay, well let's check them out. What we did as MCs, we put you in a cipher. If you could get out in the cipher and you know make us woo ah, you know, you cold, you in. If you was garbage, we we'll, we won't diss you. We said, nah, you ain't ready yet, man. Go ahead and go home and practice. Well, Twister stepped in the cipher and he rapped regular first. And he was a beast. I mean, this dude was cold as hell without the twisting. It's like, damn, this dude cold. Huh, that's I don't know. That's during his name, Cavalier. Cavalier, right. That's, a, that's Cavalier. He said, nah, hit him with the other joint. And he bust out with the tongue twister thing, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, shit, he was cold. And how that came about, because a lot of people don't know, they had a bet. His own crew, Connect Flow, created a bet of him. That he couldn't get this style. The style originally came from jazz, from um, New York. The creators, Jazz and Jay Z, the original name of the song was called The Originator. And if you listen to that song on YouTube or Google it, you hear it there. But they didn't do it as much as Cavity. He took it and he intensified it you know, or enhanced it, where it's more twisted and less, you know, slow flow. So I give him credit for that. And how that came about, he asked, is there any producers in here that can do a style to this certain track? And nobody took the job. So I said, I do it, I can do it. So okay, we're well, cool. So we'd go to my crib, and I, back then I had the little um the, the Yamaha VSS 30 sampler, 60 seconds. I mean I was it was two seconds, no three seconds, no a minute. That was a little minute sampler. And the Casio SK-1 was a um, two-second sample. I had that, too. And that's what, that's what I used to do pre-production on back then. And we sat down in the basement trying to work on something, something to fit. And then finally, it was one day before we had to go to the studio because he needed this song for a show. And the show was offering a record deal and a video. So that same day we had to go to the studio, I came up with the track. Boom. And it rolled from there and it was a hit. Right there. You know, he won. He used to say he won the contest. And that's the Mr. Tongue Twister that's song? That's the Mr. Tongue Twister song, you know. And uh, that was dope, man, you know. And, but the sad part is, you know, black people don't like to do things the right way, man, you know, because I feel like if, if we chefs and we make a loaf of bread and I bought the, the wad and the eggs and you bought the yeast and the flour, we put it together, you got bread, you supposed to shut, you supposed to slice that bread up, you know, and look out for the ones that help. You know, it's sad that, you know, this dude ain't reached back to me or nothing and helped me out or even gave me, mentioned me in anything, you know what I'm saying, as far as his history. If you go on YouTube and all that, he don't say nothing about me. But I don't care. Fuck you. <laughs> to be honest, you know, because if you ain't reached back now, dude, I ain't thinking about you. I got to keep pushing, I'm going to keep doing me. You know, so it is what it is. Okay, like, so what what moved you back into, like, house music? Man, because the music and hip-hop was getting garbage as hell. And then I saw a lot of my heroes, man, uh, stop rapping and uh, giving up or changing their style to format towards the bullshit rap. And I was like, nah, I'm done. No, I'm not going to fuck with that. Or I could have simply said, well, fuck it, I'm going to keep it pushing and go underground with them. Go underground with the ones that did stick around. But the underground's getting less play and, and more garbage getting on the airplay and all the, the hype and the money and the fame. I'm not jealous of it, man. It's just if you're gonna put out some music, make it something I can listen to 30 years down the line. Not no shit you can play, okay, one week this hot, then next week you can't play no more because something else is hot. You know, like, oh, this is the new shit, that shit old now. You know, these kids is fickle. They don't know what 
what they want. So living yeah, in the moment. And living in the moment. You hit it right on the head, man. I can't do that, man. Me being a DJ, I I have to play it because that's how. I, so know, so when what, what like around what year frame was when you finally this like. Is like no, I'm so saying, when did you finally decide to, like, because you were, you were always, like, doing house and yeah. hip-hop. Yeah. But what, around what time frame when you made that turn to push more the, towards? Was house, uh, I'll say early, like, to 2005. Okay. About 2005, man, you know, everything started making that shift. And house is more friendlier. You can go and just beat it and play it and everybody having a good time, old or new. Well, talk about your, um, tell me about your crew, you know, Ghetto DJs. You know. Ghetto DJs, my man x rays from Dem Dare, me and him always out of out a lot of things. It was my boy, we see each other dap out. Uh, he used to sell me records over at Dr. Wax Records, you know, and, and my man, my protege, 33 to 3rd, I taught him how to DJ. Back then, I, I, well, I, I schooled him on a lot of things, and he formed himself. We used to call each other and get it in. We used to always tell, hey man, holler, you know, go see uh, um, Ray. You know, if we ain't got other, go see Ray and them. I used to go to High Park, see Ray and Chuck, and he used to, you know, sit and rap with them and buy CDs and shoot the shit with them. And one day, um, I saw Ray, I think it was at uh, Betty's Blue Star Lounge. And he was like, uh, man, come to the crib. You know, it could be guys, man, I got a crew too. And at the time, I had a DJ crew called Table Madness. You know, me, Funk, Swift, Miss Mango, Freeze Rock, we, we, you know, uh, Low Key Native One, and this dude named Cairo from Japan. So we already had our scene, but they was like doing the same thing, you know, getting to the feel themselves and stuff. So I met up with Ray. When I went over there, man, it was like, goddamn it, 100 DJs over there. I'm like, oh snap, and they had setups everywhere. Records, setups, no CD players, all 12s, mixer, power speakers, records. Get out. I said, man, you know, I want to get out with y'all, man. You know, I'm seeing another, you know, just like Shy Rock, a lot of like minded people on the same page. So I got up with Ray, got up with them. They, they welcomed me with my arms, man, because I got to show my, my thing. Yeah, Ray. This Ray right here, y'all. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah, I'm here. Come on, get me. All right. Okay, brother. All right, Sorry. That, that's, that was X-ray, right? Yeah, we got a party tonight. You know what I'm I missing calls and shit, but I got to do this with my man E. So, continue on. House music is the way to go. I got to get them DJs. We the largest DJ crew in the city of Chicago. We the only crew we like what 40 DJs deep, and we everywhere. You know we we politic with everybody. Man, we don't got no enemies in this man. If you play music like Get Out, we mess with you. From your perspective, what do you least like about this music business? It's the politics. It's a lot of politics in it now, man. Um, yeah, Cass is coming in to my man, don't support his party because my party this night, this, that, and the other. And yeah, DJs, I don't mess with him because he don't play my tracks. And it's sad because there's enough money out here for everybody, but it's really not, with me, it's not about the money. It's about playing music and getting fans and friends and the crowd to enjoy what they want to hear. I don't play for me, I play for you. I try to get it in and I try to sneak in some new joints in there that, and get y'all interested in what I do. You know what I'm saying? And, and hopefully you'll like it and listen. But really, this is the politics of, of money and, and these shady ass promoters out here stopping you from shining, man. That's what it's me. As a producer, what sound do you like the most or or the least? It's right here, man. You can't. You can't beat no boom pap, man. It's like, you hear that, you get the head nod, man. Your, your cheeks get tight, man. You know what I'm saying? That good feeling. That's feel good, man. When you can get some tracks of music that touch your soul like that, man, I fucks with you 100, man. All day. Shout out to Gangstar. Shout out to Wu-Tang, man. Those, those, those are my influences right there, man. Shout out to my Wu-Tang brothers in the, in, the, in the coalition, man. Real talk. Okay. 
what producer in the last year has been more inspiring to you? As far as in this last year, just one year in this whole last in year. One whole year, it's hard to say. It's a lot. Corky Strong, my brother Corky. Uh, man, DSP, he, he dope. Uh, Mike Dunn, Camille. In the Rizzo, last year. The last year. And all this bad. Oh, I can't pick one. You, you killing me now. Because there's so many talented. I asked the hard question. Okay, it's, it's so many talented people out here, man. If it's dope, you are you are inspiring me. Let's put it like that. I since I can't pick everybody, if you're dope and you make goodies like this, you are inspiring me. Don't if it's something like I can't <laughs> fuck with you. No, that's not music. That's that's even though Curtis Mantronic did that man on the drum machines back in the day it was good then because it was slower and it was dope the way he did it. Y'all just took it and ran with it. And... All right, no. What do you want to be remembered for? Help people, man. Inspiring other people to, to, to get their dreams out there and do them. You know what I'm saying? That, I, I always try to reach my head to, to help somebody else because some people did that to me as a young man. You know, as, if I was doing it wrong, hey man, hey, how you doing? You do this. I want to reach people and, and show them there's a way they can get their stuff heard and put out there. Just 